What's happening guys? Another Sunday scan coming at you this time for the 8th of November and the week ahead. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what worked last week, uh, a little bit about kind of sizing up and, and getting to that next level and how to do it. Uh, I've got a lot of t-shirts to give out, but you know, first and foremost, you saw a little bit of a change in the market last week in some of the news plays and some of the earnings type plays where um, they were super, super retail crowded, uh, very popular names, and then just completely unwound. And MRNA is an example of that, as well as uh, Peloton, where uh, things just got absolutely obliterated uh, on either news or earnings or whatever the case may have been. Blue, B-L-U-E as well. So the market is shifting uh, a little bit as far as all these names that have been priced per to uh, perfection. Uh, they are finally starting to get a little bit of, um, you know, some, some destruction in, in the particular name. So be aware of that. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, you start to swing these names and, and they've been priced to perfection for quite some time. And uh, you don't really realize just how far off you know, that might be from reality when the earnings hit and the momentum and the air all comes out. So uh, be aware of that. And, uh, you know, one by one, this is the kind of stuff that can happen. And that is the risk of, of holding into uh, different styles of uh, catalyst and, and things like that. So I think the biggest takeaway is not to underestimate the unwind. So if these things are coming apart, uh, by the way, you also saw car. Car was the, one of the craziest things I've ever seen. Um, you know, obviously DWAC was one of those crazy short squeezes, but you know, when you see a stock go from $170 to I think it was 542 or something like that, I mean, just I, I've never seen that happen before in my life uh, on on a multi-billion-dollar company. But you know, at the same time, it, it kind of goes to show you that you know you always have to. Uh, focus on risk management. If things are, you know, unknown, unsure, uh, they don't really have an edge. They don't really have a place on your screen. They shouldn't have a place on your screen. I traded car, uh, the first run up and had a nice parabolic move. It slammed, but it ended up holding. So I ended up taking a loss on that. And then I let it exhaust all the way out and got a nice fade on the, on the backside. But realistically, there wasn't really much edge on the front side for any size. And I want to talk about today um, in the first part of the segment, you know, where and, and why certain plays give you conviction and sort of how to level up for something like a, a car uh, or, uh, you know, a trade that, that maybe comes on your radar midday from scans where you shouldn't really be applying, you know, any, any uh, aggressive risk because one, you don't have a game plan, two, you're not prepared. Uh, and, and three, it doesn't really fall into a wheelhouse of a high conviction, high probability type of trade. So, uh, as promised last week, um, you know, as you guys know, all you have to do is leave a comment, write the timestamp of your key takeaway, right? So whatever it is, whatever gave you an aha moment, whether it's something I said, a concept, a scan of, you know, whatever it, it, it could have or is or was, um, write it. And you know that helps other people, it allows them to come um, back and review uh, whatever it was that I did say at that particular timestamp. And as promised, I've got a lot of extra shirts. Um, John, my uh, shirt guy, the loyal brand, uh, has uh, some, some inventory to get rid of by the end of the year. So I'll be giving away a lot of shirts just because you guys are leaving comments. So, uh, Stu uh, Rotisi, probably killed that name. Jerry Gislain, Lane, uh, Screen Local, Tim Tolson, different CMD Chris856. I wrote all your names on the scan. Uh, so, if you think you got called, just go and check out the scan. The link is always in the description. Uh, and we'll be shipping you guys out some shirts this week. Um, so fireworks, like I said, you know, get prepared for big moves, get prepared for, uh, moves that actually are going to have legs. You saw LCID and then we talked about it last week where, you know, it felt like that transitional day that we talked about where, you know, there's just this 
huge volume and it becomes almost like the new base for that particular move. And so you saw the, I think it was like 300 million shares or something like that. You saw that all come in and then it broke out over the 40s, came back, consolidated, almost looked dead and then it comes back, right? And it breaks out to the new highs and it was nice breakout trade on uh, Friday. But, you know, be prepared for that kind of stuff. Be prepared for stuff hanging around. And we talked about LCID last week and why I felt like it could actually maintain, it could actually continue higher. And the reasoning for that was because, you know, Tesla was, was opening the way for this market cap expansion, right? So it's got a $1.2 trillion market cap and Lucid only had, you know, at that time about a $40 billion market cap. Now it's about 60, 60 and a half, something like that. Um, and, and I think it's important to understand what the market is allowing to happen at this current time. And uh, because of that, we had that nice secondary move in Lucid, which maybe we wouldn't have in another market. So um, that was that. Um, one of the uh, other things that I wanted to kind of talk about was recording. And this is five terabytes. That's a huge hard drive and it's very cheap. You can buy these for um, you know, maybe 100, 150 bucks, something like that. Um, but I record my screens every single day. And, and maybe one day I end up doing a, another um, you know, kind of basically a, 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 I don't even know, like a, a video of all, you know, all kinds of trades. I literally trade my screen. I mean, I literally record my screen every single day, um, with all the trades trying to capture, you know, then I can go back and kind of capture, you know, the proper setups and, and at one, one point, one day, um, you know, maybe it'll be able to help another trader, but uh, point is, is that you can do that. All you have to do is buy one of those, um, plug it into your computer and you can dump everything to that. You don't have to use all your space on your computer. Um, when you fill one up, go buy another one. But the ability to go back and watch it with commentary in the room, you know, typically on any of these big movers, I jump in the lounge and I start saying, Hey guys, watch this level, start recording now. If it fails here again, there's a good chance that you know, it might have a, a goalie pull or it might stuff and then slam. And a lot of times, not every time, but eight, eight, nine out of 10 times, you know, within four, five, six minutes, you have an unreal video capture of the real time, either goalie pull that we talk about or stuff move. And not every time, you know, it's, it's not always going to be the same every single time. And so being able to see these over and over, the, the way in which they might uh, trap a, a particular day or the way in which it might differ time to time gives you that sort of well-rounded understanding of, you know, what the general idea is that you're looking for because it's not always going to be picture perfect. And when it's not picture perfect and it ends up being trappy, you need to understand when to get away and get out. So. Um, you know, everybody always says, you know, I want to learn tape. I want to do this. I want to do that. The answer is recording. And then when it comes down to it, most people don't record. So, I mean, that's on you. If you really do care to learn, if you really do care to understand how to read tape, if you really do care about, you know, excelling at that, then you should be recording every single time there's a big trade that's happening because you can go back and review it and look for similarities between them. And that's the key. Look for similarities between the stuff moves, the goalie pull type moves, uh, and what can you do to almost anticipate that or at least be prepared so that you're not part of it and be able to take advantage of the either backside of that trade or that next trap, right? So the, the last piece that I really wanted to, or I, I got a couple more, but the, the, the big thing that I want to go over um, this week was, you know, everybody always asks, and even um, Alex Bustos from Be The Story, we were talking about you know, how to get to that next level. When, when do you start to move the needle? When do you do this? When do you do that? At what, at what point was it for uh, my buddy that had just started out to start you know, excelling? And you know, I think I finally came to the answer and it's just literally doing the same thing over and over until it happens. Right. And, um, 
I saw a tweet this weekend, Josh had posted it, uh, about 95% uh, of traders simply can't do what they say they will. Uh, they cannot follow a system, they second guess it. Um, and you know, most of the people are gonna fail at, at you know, they're, they're gonna say they're gonna do something, but when it comes down to it, they, they don't. And I think that the, the real key is understanding what you're good at and understanding what your A plus setup is. And, and I know that I say that all the time, but at some point you're going to have this major trade opportunity that comes into your wheelhouse that is your level up play, your chance to get to that next level. And, you know, I rarely, rarely use the word magnitude, the magnitude of this setup. It's massive. And OCGN was clearly that trade this week. OCGN was 100% prepared for. OCGN was just waiting to absolutely come in as soon as it stopped squeezing out. The key for me, the key for you, the key for everyone was just not to get bent on the front side trying to find the top. Everybody tried to find the top. Everybody got exhausted. And for those that were patient enough to wait, wait until open, wait until key levels were, you know, failed or exhausted out, um, gave one of the best trades, uh, for, for me anyway, probably a top 10 trade of the year. Now, that was all because I was prepared. It came into my wheelhouse. It was my A plus type of trade. Now, every single day I might trade that same setup, but it's just not such a multiple. It's not, it's not set up in the manner that this one was. But the point here is that you just keep on doing the same thing over and over and over and over. And at some point, that magnitude setup, that home run trade will come. And I think that people get tired of not hitting that home run, so they start to change things up. They start to, uh, well, this worked for that person, so I'm gonna try to go that way. And this person made a lot of money on that trade, so maybe I'm gonna become a long trader and I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy this breakout. And then that doesn't work, right? So you start to get all scatterbrained and trying all these different things to try to fix what's not broken. It's just that you're not patient enough to let the system work. Let you know the high probability trade over time, eventually you will have a high magnitude type of setup that will set you apart, set you free, get you to the next level. And then at that point, you start to get a little bit more comfortable in the market and you know start have maybe applying more risk and you know getting to uh the the level where you thought you wanted to be and then at that point you're going to be doing that for you know three months six months and then another setup will come and then that will bring you to the next level so the key is to not you know not forget about these not um i guess not take the opportunity away from yourself and the way that you do that is by jumping in front, by trying to find the top, by exhausting yourself on the front side of the move and ending up missing that unwind. So keep that in mind, keep doing the same thing over and over, if it works, right? If it's working, keep doing it. The op opposite is if you keep on doing the same thing over and over and it's not working, then obviously that's the definition of insanity uh, and that's probably not where you wanna be. But don't give up just because, you know, you have something working and it's just not working at the pace that you want it. But understand when that opportunity presents itself and don't screw it up by pre-exhausting yourself. That's the most important thing you can do. Um, the last couple things uh, was, you know, the comment uh, I was talking to a, a friend um, this weekend and you know, income versus wealth. We've hit upon that a couple of times, but I I think that I short stocks for income, right? But most of my wealth has been created on the long side. And most people kind of uh, would suggest that I am a short biased trader. And yes, I prefer to short. Yes, I am, um, I am uh, more confident on the uh, short side uh, in particular situations, but you know, all in all, most of 
the money that I've made in the market is actually on the long side. And I think that says something. And, and I think a lot of people would agree. And, and there are some that are just literally only short only traders. But I think the, the idea is to get income from uh, the short side and then put it into vehicles that are working on the long side. And, you know, when you catch a market like we have uh, and a lot of the swing ideas, you know, you've got KU. LR uh, from 210, it's at 350s now. Uh, you had IONQ this week. You, you just get involved in a, in a few. And the difference between the long side and the short side is all it takes is one short squeeze to wipe out all the other trades. And really on, on the long side, most of these either go and they go crazy or they just kind of hang around. And maybe one kind of fades off or whatever. But until this week, we really haven't had that many 30, 40, 50% haircuts, uh, you know, on something like Peloton and things like that. But for the most part, usually the long sides, you know, as long as you're not, you know, you, you know, you know what you own and you're not um, long something that could raise tomorrow. Um, but for the most part, uh, if you are letting these trades work, most of the time they are, you know, sideways or, or kind of, eh, you know, whatever, maybe down 10%. Or they've turned into multiple week, multiple month type of moves like AEHR. AEHR was a monster move. Um, so it's really all about finding those, letting them work. And, uh, you know, I think that that also is uh, inclusive of that piker scalp mentality, right? That's great for building account. It's great for income, but it's not going to build wealth. You need to do something else with that money thinking bigger picture, letting the trades work. And, you know, unfortunately for new traders, it's really all about building that account. But once you build that account, you need to start thinking about, um, you know, how do uh, I expand my playbook and how do I put that money to work and let it work for me rather than always pushing every single button. So think big picture. And uh, I think the last thing um, that I was going to talk about was a tweet that I put out on Friday and I feel like it needed to be said this week. There's a lot of people making a lot of money and there's a lot of people that think that they're not making enough money because, you know, if you took out social media, you'd be pretty happy with where you're at, I bet. And, you know, you see a lot of monster p &Ls, you see a lot of people uh, doing some crazy things, but you feel like you're inferior. You feel like you should be there. You should feel like you need to start pushing and, and, and putting you know, the, the, the gas pedal down and, and get going. And you personally have not experienced the emotions that are involved in sizing up. You personally have not uh, been, um, you know, been on that side of the trade. You don't, you don't know how you react to those situations. So all of a sudden you plowed all this cash into a trade and it, it may not be uh, the right trade for you. And then when you're faced with this uh, risk management thing, uh, do you or do you not have proper risk management? And a lot of people will realize that they don't have the risk management that they thought and you end up taking a big L. And now instead of taking one step back, you've taken 10 steps back. So. I think it's important to stay in your lane. I've said this before, but be inspired by other people's big P&Ls, but don't be influenced it, in it. Uh, if you are influenced in other people's big P&Ls, it's going to come into your trading. You're going to push the envelope when you shouldn't, and you're not going to be prepared for the risk management that it takes to manage that trade properly. So stay in your lane, be inspired, reverse engineer those trades. Why did they make so much? What was it that made that a setup that was worth the risk? What was it that you could have done better to make a better trade out of it? Not I shoulda, coulda, woulda done this, but what could you have done to make it better? What can you do better for next time? Maybe is the best way to put it. Um, so I never like to think about, you know, what I should have done. I didn't do it. Right. And you didn't do it. I didn't do it. It is what it is. But the value that you can take from whatever that trade is, is how you can improve for next time. 
And that's the same thing that you can do with somebody else's. If you are looking at somebody's big PL, take it and say, what can I do better on this trade for next time? And when you're prepared and when that magnitude setup comes, then be prepared and it's worth the risk. So that is it for the first part of scan and we'll get into the watches for tomorrow. All right, guys. So for the second part of scan, uh, as always, I'm not a financial advisor. These are not buy or sell recommendations. This is for educational and informational purposes only. If you're not okay with that, shut the video off. Don't watch it. Uh, and don't pay attention to anything that I say. If you are okay with it and you are interested in understanding the why uh, I am looking at particular names, understanding the what makes it a good setup, and understanding you know how you can improve your trading, then by all means continue to watch, but just understand nothing is buy or sell recommendation. Now, hit the wrong button. There we go. F. Uh, Ford is going to be a main watch, and this is one of those where I want to come in with two, uh, two kind of prepared trades. Uh, one is if uh, you know the the entire market comes in on this Elon Musk tweet on whether or not he should sell ten percent of his holdings uh, to pay his fair share in tax. Um, you know, do we get a eighty or hundred dollar pullback uh, in uh, Tesla? Possibly, but. How will that weigh on F and Lucid and all these other ones? So we've got to we've got to figure out what happens off the open, obviously on Monday. But uh, I had a great trade on this thing, and and we just kind of I would say uh, ran out of time. I would say, uh, but nice key level right over here. Like I said in the room, this uh, when it started to pull back over here, I was like, I don't, I don't think there's a better risk to reward type of play than this five to ten cent type risk. For the potential, if it does unwind, it, it probably would have been about a dollar to dollar fifty. Um, but obviously, ran out of time, and uh, you know I'll be watching it again on Monday. But higher the better. And the reason I said I want to be prepared for two trades is because if it ends up just kind of pulling back and they soak it up, pull back, soak it up again, and you start to see these wicks form, then we could easily go twenty twenty two. So I want to be prepared for that. But if it doesn't, and it stays heavy with the rest of the sector, I do think that we could have a nice pullback uh, towards the mid to low 18s and then potentially have some type of panic. Uh, but if 19s continue to base and they keep on soaking it up, that is something that I do not want to fight short. So it's sort of like OCGN, uh, not the magnitude of that setup, but just a high probability that the chart may need a little bit of a reset before it heads higher. So, you know, sometimes when I start to watch something short, people think that I'm biased and, and people think that I'm only looking for a short. We can learn a lot over the next couple days. If it continues to try to pull back and they soak it up, it's setting up for a nice breakout to 20 to 22. But if it does stay heavy, I do feel like it needs that reset day and then it can come back. And we saw that on LCID after you know the big moves, we had this reset day right over here. And then it came back up and you can see they started to uh, buy the dips uh, after that before this obvious current breakout. So <clears throat> it's normal. You know, you have this huge move on these particular names, F included, and you know, at some point they need to kind of shake the tree and are you an investor, are you a trader? Uh, get shorts in there. I mean, it's just part of how these things work and they test conviction levels whether you know the shorts conviction or longs conviction and then they carry on uh, as usual. So typically for me, I like to take advantage of that gut check moment. You know, are you a short? Are you a long? Are you staying in? And you know, that all happens usually with a fast flush that I want to take advantage of and then move on and that's it. If that flush does not happen, and it looks like it, you know, was about to, or about to, or about to, then that to me means that there's probably going to be a nice secondary leg. Uh, PFE, nice move on Friday. Got a good piece of this. Forty uh, seven fifties was sort of my key. I wanted to uh, use as a guide. Actually, forty eight fifties, and uh, nice unwind throughout the day. 
and ended up coming back in and I was pretty much done with it midday before it started to come back towards uh, the, the VWAP level. You can see that it held extremely well and then carried on. You can also see by having VWAP on your charts how this could help you. Um, you can see that it came back over here, started to fail versus that level. And then as it crossed over and it started to base, you can see how it started the next leg. So that's a nice feature that I like to have on my charts. It's just something that allows you to kind of see, um, you know, where the average price has traded and where, you know, it's going to either uh, stay heavy or take on the next leg. And a lot of times you'll see consolidation or, you know, uh, you know basically a, a, a tug of war at those particular levels. Uh, IONQ, so far so good. Uh, this has been a, uh, a nice long idea. Uh, you guys uh, saw it last week on the video, uh, as well as prior days in the room. It just felt like one of those types that should have died uh, and it felt pretty trappy. So a you know, nice little trap formation. A lot of times when it kind of goes up, pulls back, goes up, pulls back. If it starts to break those highs that next day, that's when you know that you know shorts are kind of in a bind and you can kind of see that here where um you know, you'd be exhausted if you were alone you know you, you're up a buck on the day it starts to pull back next day you're up a buck again and then it pulls back again you're like ah oh, i knew i should have sold next time i'm gonna sell then everybody sells and then it breaks through the prior high and you know it goes so that would be uh you know something that i'd be looking for uh, as a short trade in the coming week. But for now, I think that if week opens hold, we can go 20, 22, you know, something like that. That would be ideal, but uh, the volume's good. I'm starting to monitor it. It's a main watch, but it's nothing that I'm crazy excited about. I just wanna make sure that I set price alerts and be ready for it. Uh, LCID, I think is gonna depend a lot on uh, Tesla and, and figure out whether or not um, this thing is going to continue on. Like I said last week, I felt like this 300 million share day was sort of that transitional day where um, you know, a lot of people came in, a lot of shorts came in, and it might be that new base for a very, very long time. And um, so we had that gut check moment right here, and then it came back up, and then away it went. So at this point, I'd be looking at dips versus 38, uh, in the near term to see if that's a, you know, a solid, uh, you know, setup. And if it stays heavy at 38, I probably wouldn't want to be there. But uh, I do think that we could be, you know, uh, in the in the short term, setting up for something like 45, 50, 60 on this particular name. However, Tesla needs to agree. And if it doesn't, then you know, throw away that entire thesis. Next is failed follow through MRNA. Uh, this is one of those where it is super, super, super retail crowded. Everybody made a fortune on the way up and, you know, they, they did phenomenal. And then when it unwinds, you never want to underestimate the unwind. So this is something that, you know, it could do a really big reset and it actually could come back in and maybe test towards this prior level of support in the 190s and you know what what that means is that everybody that's been dip buying it you know oh this this fell too much this can't this can't do that this this can't keep going down all those people will panic out and then that's going to send it down further and then at that point i think there'll be an opportunity to pick it up for a potential uh long trade but definitely you know don't underestimate if it busts through this prior support to 10 level we could go into the 190s and really have a panic, uh, 160s, 170s, 180s. I don't think that's going to happen, but I do think that uh, if we do get an opportunity under 190s, I would be uh, interested in potentially uh, you know, reversing that trade or, or at least switch to the, the long side. No current position, but I still do think that any gap might be met with pressure and more downside. I feel like a lot of shorts came in towards the uh, end of the day, a lot of short cover rather. So whenever that happens, I feel like if there's any follow through 240, 250 on Monday, I think that we could end up getting pressure uh, right back down. Blue, same deal, higher the better, potential uh, continued unwind. This one was also down 50%, uh, just like uh, Peloton, maybe Peloton was 30 or 40%, but um, big unwind. So I'd be watching, typically I look for a possible push towards the prior 
VWAP line, maybe a, a push out of the gate, 14, 1450s, and then looking to fade it off. It looks like it was uh, had a de decent run up into uh, into this catalyst, and literally kissed this prior, you know, uh, this prior candle, and then straight down. So there's a lot of retail stuck on this. So I do think we could have another fun one. Uh, BKKT, very nice one on uh, Friday. I traded the failed fall through momentum. It will definitely likes to test shorts thesis and it likes to squeeze out. It has a lot of those moves, but the more that it does this, the more that it might ultimately fade. So I am cautiously bearish for the potential of 30 to 25 in the near term, um, but you need to be aware of these swipe candles. You need to think about, in my opinion, uh, positioning uh, or at least adjusting your position throughout the, the day because it, it's difficult to hold size through, you know, sure, you get to the lows at the end of the day, but, and, and maybe if we had more time, it would have gone uh, a little bit lower, but it does get a little bit difficult to, to trade size and, and have it do uh, all these three, three dollar type moves. So moving on to continuation uh, trades, ASRT, nice little, um, basically push into the close. I like these types of trades where they gap up, they sell off, and then they come back. Uh, so I participated in that for a uh, continuation type play. <clears throat> I'd be watching it for, for it to build basically over 140s. If it, if it stays heavy and it can't base, uh, and I'm not just saying 140 exactly, but 135, 140, if it starts to consolidate and then form a new base 140s, I'd be looking to potentially scale. But I do like how it sold off and then came all the way back. Uh, that allows all gap sellers to get out uh, and then maybe you know reposition into the close and it shows a little bit of strength. It allows those gap sellers to to exit. And so those are the ones that are typically in the way. Uh, that also might encourage some shorts to come in because of the weakness. And then it jumps back up. And uh, if if we had that 140 base, I think we could have some continuation. MEXT, uh, no, METX, that's why. There we go. Uh, I think it's obvious that, you know, there's there's a buyer in the tape. You know, you can see each one's been soaked up. Each pullback is, is getting soaked and continuing higher. So uh, typically these stocks in this price range, I feel like um, weekends are good for them because it's, it's one of those that, I feel like uh, there's a lot of shareholders and a lot of shareholders get excited over the weekend and they go on the message boards and they talk about how excited they are about a particular trade. So, um, you know, it does, I'm not suggesting by any means that it, it's CEI at all, but you know, I do, it does remind me of this little setup um, before it, it took off. So I would not by any means suggest that it is uh, similar to CEI, uh, but my point of, you know, preparing or my point of, of thinking that is that you know it should have died and if it does not break over 70s and hold I would assume that it's gonna go back to 30 or 40 cents uh, but if you start to see a 70 base on this thing then it has potential so I would assume it will fail if 70s cannot firm up but if it does don't underestimate the fact that it could go and, you know try to push towards that one dollar magnet um, again I don't think it's the next CEI, um, but I just wanted you guys to see, you know, sometimes when things should have died, could have died, uh, would have died typically, and then all of a sudden they do prove uh, to have a lot more strength, uh, then, you know, it's, it's notable. So for me, that level is 70 base. Otherwise, I have none of those thoughts. Uh, PTPI. So far, uh, it's been an excellent trade if you've traded it. I've traded it around the core. It was a big trade on the first day. Uh, got a, a couple good uh, entries there. Um, this first day over here, uh, I, I was involved in all the dips. Uh, reminded everybody, make sure you, you know, you're locking in. Involved in this dip. Reminded everybody, make sure you're locking in. Uh, and then I bought some into the close, and then it just rocketed like 90 cents per share. So again, the stronger things close, the stronger things break out and squeeze into the close, the less I like for continuation the next day. Uh, same thing I just said on MRNA, same kind of concept. So 
whenever that's the case, if I had like a gap or thought, like, hey, this thing could have follow through, uh, and it does this into the close, then I like to sell uh, more than I typically otherwise would. Um, so anyway, I sold some into that. Not enough because uh, I did leave early that day and I was just kind of letting it work, but I sold uh, about a third of it, or basically everything over the core. Um, reloaded into the uh, dips again, sold some into the reps, and so far I'm just carrying a core trade. The only way that I would get excited about this trade is if 310, 315 starts to um, build, if we get a PR or something like that. It does feel like the potential of, you know, we had that transition day, now it's just working everybody out, but that bias can get you in trouble. So for me, the proof that I need to see is 310, 315 uh, starts to uh, confirm and break out. KULR, you guys know, uh, I don't really need to, to discuss uh, too much. $2.10 was the idea on the tweet uh, for the uh, swing. It has held extremely well. We talked about the three breakout being huge on the daily chart. We got it and it's just been insanely strong. Uh, you know, every single dip gets absorbed and then it pops up. So it's finally starting to speed up. I'd love to see it, you know, go for 450. Maybe I'd uh, adjust the position again and then just, you know, see what happens long term, see where it goes. Um, Geo, so far so good. Um, I did downsize. There was a day this week where I felt a little uh, sketchy with the entire market. So anything that I was kind of oversized on, I went ahead and locked in some. Uh, but this one came back nicely. I'm involved since this day uh, from when I mentioned it in the room. Uh, letting it work, I will continue to add to the core until it doesn't, but nice setup, nice uh, long-term kind of uh, breakout feel. And once again, it's one of those, you know, you had this transitional day and then all of a sudden it's, you know, back up testing towards those levels. We've talked about that same setup on loop. You've got this huge transitional day and then you wait for it to start to do the curl. You know, you can see a lot of similarities here with that one and you can also see the similarities with AEHR if you guys remember when I started the swing here at 6 so 650 or so same kind of concept same you know the same kind of general theme that I look for in my swing trades um, last two hood I'm watching uh, I have some calls on it but I sold the equity but I am looking to get back involved uh, on dips as long as it continues to hold trend, but it feels like one of those where it might want to um, Kind of leg up to 40 or 50 uh, Once it stops going down last but not least HTZZ the old Hertz HTZ then emerged from bankruptcy came on the OTC with this and warrants, but I've been swinging it long. It just feels like one of those where you know, we get the right news or, or the right, uh, you know, Tesla type stuff. There's a lot of doubt right now. There's a lot of like, it's going both ways. Um, you know, it's not what they promised. They're saying they ordered more. I, I don't even know what's going on, but it feels like one of those that if it does start to go, we could have one of those old school OTC type uh, squeezes. So definitely something that I am interested in watching. So that's it. Uh, if you guys have any questions at all, or reach out. You guys know the drill. Leave a like, leave a comment with the timestamp. I'm going to be picking a lot of shirts as well as uh, other things. I think next week is Icon Meals. Uh, we'll give away scans, give away IU. Um, you know, just for you guys leaving a small comment about your key takeaway. So have a good rest of the weekend, and uh, we'll catch you in the room on Monday.